Gold, which has a density of 19.32 grams per cubic centimeters, is the most ductile metal and can be pressed into a thin leaf or drawn out into a long fiber. If a sample of gold with a mass of 27.63 grams is pressed into a leaf of 1.000 microns of thickness, what is the area of the leaf? All right, so first, let's try and find the volume of this piece of gold. Because if we have that, then uh, it will be much easier to, figure, to use that in conjunction with the thickness we're given to try and solve for the, vol uh, for the area of one side of the gold. So let's solve for volume, which, of, which is going to be mass over density. And the mass, as we're given, is 27.63 grams of this piece of gold divided by its density, which we're told is 19.32 grams per cubic centimeter. And plugging that into our calculator, we don't need to do any unit conversion here because they're both in grams and those are the, that's the unit that's canceling out. And we get a density, or we get a, uh, a volume of 1.430 cubic centimeters. And let's convert it into meters since we can see we're going to have to work with a more direct unit of meters later on anyway. So let's also multiply this by, let's convert it into cubic meters by saying, multiplying it by one meter, divide, uh, and it's one meter in, or 100 centimeters in a meter. So let's add this little conversion factor right here, and cube it, of course. And we get an answer of 1.430 times 10 to the negative sixth of cubic meters. And that is our volume for this gold piece. Now, what do we do with that? What can we do with this? Now, if you have, an, if you have with a bit of a basic understanding of geometry, then you might notice that the total volume of this piece of uh, gold, especially when it's in a state of being a thin leaf, as it describes, or being flat, you, you might realize that the total volume of this piece in this state is just going to be equal to the area of one, the, to, to the area we're looking for, the area of the side of it, multiplied by the thickness of that piece. Uh, so I'll call it Z for the thickness of the piece. Uh, so we can set up this formula here to find what we're looking for. And we know that Z is going to be one micron here, is given to us in the problem. So let's rearrange this formula to solve for the area. So that's going to become uh, A equals uh, the, vol uh, the volume divided by Z. Or in this case, the volume as we figured it out above here, which is 1.430 times uh, 10 to the negative 6th meters cubed divided by our unit for the thickness. So that is going to be 1 times 10, oops, whoa, whoa, it's a bit difficult, sorry to write, it's a bit difficult to write and paint, uh, you know, 1 times 10 to the negative 6, I know that doesn't look like a 10, but believe me, it's a 10, uh, yeah, but our thickness, our thickness for the gold, 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, and plugging that into our calculator, the answer we get for the area is going to be 1.430 of meters squared. And that is our answer for the side area of the piece of gold. Now, part B asks, if instead the gold is drawn out into a cylindrical fiber of radius 2.500 micrometers, then what is the length of the fiber? Now, in a similar fashion to the previous part, it really help. It really does help to have a, a, a pretty good understanding of geometry in this case, because it would help you realize that the volume of this piece of gold in this case is going to be equal to the cross-sectional area of the of the cylinder multiplied by well the thickness of it, or rather, since it's going to be really thick, it's going to be more like 
the cross-sectional area times the length of this cylinder. So it's going to be the area of one side, basically, times the length of it, pretty, which is pretty close, really, to what we used in the previous part up here. If we consider the length of the cylinder to be analogous to the thickness of the flatter piece up above. Either way, though, we know that in the case of a cylinder, once again, it helps know a bit of geometry here, and you'd know that the area of a circle, uh, so we can sub that in for the cross-sectional area here, it's going to be equal to uh, 2 pi r, or not, not 2 pi r, sorry, pi r squared, because pi r squared, or rather pi times the square of the radius, is equal to the area of a circle. So we can substitute that in for the cross-sectional area of our formula here. So that's pi radius squared times the length of the cylinder. Or rather, it, it, since we, are, we know we're solving for the length here, that's going to be equal to the length is equal to um, the velocity divided by pi r squared. Let me fix that pi up here. So now, up above, we already determined what the volume is here. So we already know to sub in for V. It's not going to be our answer here. This, is, this was the area of what side of it. Now, the volume we determined for it was this value right here, the 1.430 times 10 to the negative 6. So our volume is 1.430 times 10 to the negative 6 of meters cubed divided by pi r squared. So that's pi times the radius squared. And the radius, as the problem gives it, gives us, is 2.500 times uh, 10, or yeah, micrometers. So that's 2.5 times 10 to the negative sixth of meters. So let's write that out here. And of course, don't forget to square it. That's an important uh, piece, or else you won't get even close to the right answer. So remember to square it, or in little r here. And the answer we get there is um, a length of about 7.284 times 10 to the fourth power of meters which is about equal to 72 times 84 kilometers. And that is our answer for part B.